Dreamer was rescued, so Krellick destroyed the phylactery. A dark energy escaped it and brought Perilu back, but she was changed. We agreed to watch over her and find a cure, so after everything we were safe. We searched the ruins and found items to help us in our journey. Then we chose to rest there to continue in the next short quest. Long rest. I'm in. Hey, Josie, how you doing? Hi. Today? I'm doing great. That's what I like to hear. It's going to be a good one. Going to be a great one. Probably not. So, We're probably going to suck, but it, you know, I, I don't it, know. To be fair, you know, it seems like the, the majority of the suck is over. You've won the campaign. You're, you're level four. There's nowhere to grow from here. I was going to say, it's like level four caps out, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, congratulations. You have won d d Good times, sweet. So next character again. Well, now rolling you're just up killing me with disappointment. Yep. Rat folk, <laughs> Charles, Edward. Casey. Shut no, your. I'm not face. gonna let that happen. I will. Boy, Why I would will... you let that happen? That is got funny written. I will over protest. Charles Edward Queso. That's... We we can discuss what we what we play for Midgard when we get closer to Midgard. Oh, I thought we were done. I thought we were going on. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I, my bad. <laughs> no, I'm alive. I'm a real boy. You told us we won. I I, I was lying. I am the DM, and <gasps> I am sorry, because I have broken a sacred <gasps> oh trust. My God. Oh, God. That, is that a thing, to be truthful to your, your players? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's a thing at all. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, never mind, then. Damn it. Like, it is. It is like a thing. It's like telling the truth to your kids. No, that's a thing. <laughs> Santa Claus is not real, children. Oh, exactly. My God. The Easter Bunny, really just a rabbit. Yep. But he will sneak into your house and steal all your eggs. And there is no Queen of England. What? Wait a second. Hey. It's a reference. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I think is it is that from? Any, uh, can any of you guess that movie? Megamind. There, there's a lad. Megamind? Man, that is like a, yeah, that is like, definitely a generational thing as man. far as like, what kid movies? <laughs> Why didn't I get well, that Megamind reference? Yeah. Uh, hey, that movie is a classic. A classic? classic? But, is it considered a classic? Seriously, go back and watch it and you will, go, I promise you, before we begin this game, if you go back and you rewatch Megamind... Are you telling me I have be... to go rewatch <laughs> Megamind before we play no, this Mega game? No, Megamind, not Megamind. <laughs> no, but... You will be pleasantly surprised at just how well it holds up and how great a movie it is. I, I like watch I could it talk about it for year. hours, but we're not we're not here for that. Okay, everybody, shut it down. Let's go watch Mega Mind real fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good movie. It's a very good. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, DreamWorks, get in contact with us. Yep, DreamWorks. Yes, if you could, uh, we'll do a private viewing. Um, preferably, you can fly us all out to LA. And, uh, <laughs> Sponsorship opportunities. Uh, anyway. Yep. There you go. <laughs> we love Mega Mind here at uh, Short Quest Long Rest. Yep. And we love Pixar. In fact, all right. uh, damn it. I wish I had like a little mug that had I'm Pixar. Gonna, I'm about but... to mute you all. <laughs> <laughs> this is all getting cut. Don't you worry about that. No, you can't say that because then I gotta leave it in. Damn it. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> no, you do not. <laughs> I do if you say it. You're not leaving that. Funnier. Don't leave that in. It's not funny. Anyway, it's not, lads, it's not funny. calm down. Children. Yeah. Raise your hand if you want to talk. Anyway, <laughs> welcome working. back to Short Quest Long Rest. Your last session ended in the death, or rather the de-animation, the destruction of Scarred, a frost giant lich you did not know existed until you stumbled into this tomb atop Kelvin's cairn to deliver a package. You successfully brought a Corpse Slayer dagger to Artist Simber, who 
with your assistance, manage to not only put down Scarred, but destroy his phylactery. Now, in the fighting, one of your number, a uh, halfling cleric named Perilu, had gotten on the wrong end of some of Scarred's magic and Lucky. presumably had been killed. Yet, with the destruction of his phylactery and the necromantic energies that came rushing out from this nexus of dark and evil, you found that she reanimated. Seemingly under the affliction of vampirism, no longer able to even hold the holy symbol of her god Yandala, seems to be battling with that sudden change. And Artis Simber, as he has been up here fighting undead for weeks atop Kelvin's cairn, has not taken to putting her down, but you will have noticed him keeping a very close eye on her, trying to figure out just what exactly to do about this new undead in your midst who nonetheless seems to retain her faculties. You found a, a few treasures in the tomb following Scard's destruction, spent a night here recovering, and so if you guys want to complete a long rest on your character sheets, you can. Nothing disturbs your rest. The tomb is quiet with Scard's destruction, eerily, almost maddeningly so. And though you spend a long, cold, hard night on stone floors, you awaken as refreshed as you can be, given the circumstances. What is, uh, what is everyone doing at this time? What is the start to your day? I have to imagine it is literally just getting the hell out of this place. I think Salvin would would groan loudly as he gets up from the stone floor. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Nine house. Just kind of grabs his back. Not one, but two days. Two days we've spent in this this god awful place. It's not great. I think Krellik's gonna listen to him complain while he eats a ration. <laughs> Enjoying your jerky, Krellik? <laughs> Yeah, I, I am. Jerk. Oh, good. At least there's something good. I think he's going to offer Grin one. I'll take one. it. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, pop it into his, uh, in between his teeth as he kind of shoulders his backpack on. So are we leaving? Please say we're leaving. I I don't think there's anything more left here for us. You're done excavating? Yeah, I, I had my fill. I had uh, intentions of going back through this place just to get everything out of it as we can, but after sleeping on the floor here, I just... I don't have it in me. Woo! Where's where's Dreamer at? Probably just standing in the middle of the room. Oh my god. Just staring at you. He just can't feel going to go over there and knock on his head. You probably go to do that, and he probably stops you before you uh, touch oh. him. God! Oh, Dreamer's not having it anymore. I'm awake. Never can tell when you're awake or asleep. It's... Oh, this is when the machines rise up. <sighs> it's disturbing. <sighs> How long have we traveled together? I don't know. I don't know. What? A couple weeks now? This happens every time. It seems like more, but it's not. Well, I don't know what to say to that, Dreamer. Okay. <laughs> yes. I'm going to check on Paralu. Yeah, you check on Paralu. Let's start gathering our stuff up. Ar is Artis still here or did he take off already? Artis is still here. Uh, upon awakening, because you guys did manage to find enough rough, raw, worn material to keep a small fire going throughout the night, uh, he has been sort of perched up against one of the pillars there in the left-hand chamber. That you had taken refuge in. Staying up through all of your watches. Opposite him in the same chamber. A very dejected, quiet-looking Paralu. 
<sighs> who, as Dreamer approaches, kind of looks up. Yeah? Good morning. I'll offer my hand. She looks it for a moment and then reaches out to accept it, hauls herself to her feet. Thanks. Um, You're welcome. I, um, I've been thinking. We, uh, y'all are, are we're going back to, to town, right? I believe we were heading back through the Dwarven Valley, perhaps taking care of some work there. I kind of don't really want to be alone, but if if you're going to be around people, I don't think I, I can be. Would would I know of any way like to help her with her vampirism, getting it fixed in some way? Stabby. Roll me a religion check. Oh boy, I'm real good at those. Eight. Oof. Eight? No, nothing really comes to mind. This is not an affliction you're terribly familiar with, nor really are many people, aside from those who dedicate themselves to such study, would be familiar with. The necromantic arts and the undead are... Anyone who studies them gets the pretty awful side eye. Perhaps someone in town may be able to help you. Hopefully. I, um... We'll see. We'll see. You mind if I travel through the, uh, to the valley with you? I don't believe that'll be a problem. Alright, thanks. And she kind of sucks on her bottom lip a little, and, uh, after a moment sort of turns back to her pack and, and shuffles through it, and reaching down into the bottom, pulls out a, uh, a bundle of rations, about four of them, and turns around and extends her hands out to you. I, uh, I don't know that I need these. I, I mean, you don't either, but maybe the others? Are you sure? And she kind of nods and then, tucking some of them under her arm, kind of touches her finger to her upper lip and peels it back some to show the fang. I, uh, I haven't been feeling hungry all night. Well, in case you are, <laughs> I offer a good berry. <laughs> <laughs> These are blood flavored. <laughs> nice. You'll love them. She stares at it for a moment and just kind of tucks it into a pocket. Yeah, um, not really feeling hungry, like I said. Maybe, maybe later. I'll nod and I'll accept half the ration. Alright, so you can go ahead and add two rations to your inventory. So, what else are you folks doing? We packing up and going, or? I think Krellick's gonna give his last little piece of jerky to Miri since she's right next to him and then get ready to go. And, uh, Miri seems to be kind of dozing for as long as she can in the, you know, scant warmth of the fire. But as soon as there's the smell of meat near her face, those eyes kind of shoot open and her head darts forward and, uh, you know, plucks that jerky from your hand and she tosses her head back. Like a bird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like it. Thanks. Um. <laughs> uh, uh, you got a welcome? <laughs> That's the... <laughs> Chew your food. Got any more? <laughs> Got any more? Uh, he'll give her a whole ration to herself. Immediately starts tearing through it, like nosing it open, using her claws to rip off what you know wax paper there is and twine holding this bundle together. Any vegetable matter, she considers it a moment and then eats it, but does her best to avoid eating some of the, the paper it's wrapped in. You're trying to fatten her up, Krellick? Well, everyone deserves to be a little plump. He pats his tummy. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, everyone awesome. would uh, smile. <laughs> Even if he is tired and sore. Think we can get fish? Mm, I don't think there's any lakes or rivers nearby. There's one a couple miles away. Maybe we can ask the dwarves if we go back through. 
give you a couple big fish. There's just this bright gleam in her eye, and she starts making for the exit, <laughs> dragging her tail, like kind of bumps you a little with one of her wings as she goes by, just dragging her tail across the stone floor. <laughs> oh, someone's hungry. Mir <laughs> Jeez, Mir, I taught you better than that. Anyways, what, uh, I think he's kind of going over to Artis before he takes off. So what's, uh, what's your plan after this? I think for as long as she is with you, and he motions towards Paralu, I shall be too. Huh. Okay. I, uh, might. You know, if something comes to mind, we'll see. Aye. Aye, okay. I'd say as far as, uh, well-known people around about this area, have you heard the name Jarl Axel? Oh, the, um, that name's rather familiar here in the north. Why do you ask? Well, we still have a package for him as well. So we're supposed to be dropping off, and the last hint we got was uh, that uh, it was up by the dwarves, and I'll be damned if I didn't forget to even bring it up while we were there. It was uh, it was an odd little meeting, mm -hmm. and uh, we were worried that Grin might lose his head. So I was hoping maybe you had some info. He he, he gives Felgrin a very confused look. Just quirks a brow. I, I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know why I would be uh, particularly inclined to ask. Well, when I was through uh, Ker Konig, I know that there was a drow wrapped in furs who passed through. You know, wasn't much involved with the people there, but it was enough of a uh, a change in the town to uh, warrant at least some attention. They'd probably know more there. Is he meant to be a drow? Jarlaxel? Yeah, I don't I don't know. Yeah, honestly, we know we know very little about him. I know the name, that's about it. Yes. Oh. Um fascinating. You know, I, uh, his name is known a good while up and down the coast there, but the people here in Icewind Dale seem to have a better understanding of the stories associated with the Strau than I do, being from Cholt. I well, that's good information. Yeah, I've heard details of him back in Waterdeep, but again, it was just tales, and, you know, you'd be surprised how often, when they mention someone's name, the the race doesn't come up as much. Mm. Well, now we know we're looking for a drow. I, I haven't, we haven't, I don't think we've seen one up here yet, no. so that's got to be pretty easy. Definitely not. Seems like, uh, well, you know, they'd stick out, we'd be able to narrow one down pretty easily, no, I must so. say, with the, the sun being gone and all, maybe we'll see more. Aye, it's a good call. Didn't even think of that. Well, uh, hopefully not. If most of the ones I've met are very few, mind you. Not so pleasant. <laughs> I think with that comment about the with there being no sun and us seeing more of them, he kind of looks to Perlu for a second, like just it dawning on him that like that this is like that this would be a haven for vampires. <laughs> so now, just like this head. area. <laughs> Yeah, I, like, I wouldn't even say anything. He would just kind of eye it real fast and be like, and it's just in his head. He's not even worried about Paralus per se, but like, oh shit, there could be lots of vampires up here now. Mm -hmm. Like, for the little bit he knows about vampires, sunlight is one of the only, you know, safe havens you have. I say we get all our things together and let's get out of here. I, I don't want to spend any more time in this, this god awful crypt than we have to. We've lost too many people on this mountain already. Where, where is Tavini? He kind of looks around. She's been sitting by the fire this whole time, quietly oh. trying to mend Krellick's shield. Mm. She's been using mending on it. Well, nice. are you ready to go? Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Just before she stands up from the fire, she's going to use her blessing of the forge Ooh. upon Krellick's shield and give it a, <laughs> a plus one. I see. Oh, that's awesome! Oh, yeah. God, you were just yeah. like the tankiest son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, it's even <laughs> harder to hit. That you at? That's like a twenty-two <laughs> AC. <A> twenty-two. <laughs> that's so crazy. Okay, so we gotta charge headlong into a fight right now, like, <laughs> like and just, just let him to, tank. to test this. Exactly. I just want to see. We've already pretty much proven he can't get hit. Let's see now what happens when he has an entire one extra AC. Yep, she'll just say a blessing of the the father of the forge upon the the shield. 
And then when she has, when she feels that warmth settle into the shield, she'll screw it to the side and stand up because it's a bit bigger than her. Yeah, yeah I imagine that shield's <laughs> pretty huge. Oh man, Whether Tavini could use it as full cover. It's like an umbrella. Yeah. <laughs> That plus tent. that is that is chonky. Yeah. That is <laughs> very nice. And Krellik, it's strange because as you you know, sort of accept your shield back, you can feel warmth coming off of it, you know. It's not enough to keep the worst of the cold from you. It's not enough to give you cold resistance, but it is very much like being under the light of a summer sun in the cold. So, a little, little bit of your, your god, Tavini's god, dwelling within it. I think he's gonna give it a little tap and look at Tavini. He's like, well, well I figured it did seem to work. Much appreciated. Tavini smiles. Uh, it, yes. She nods her head and then just kind of gathers her things and gets ready. She's not super great at compliments. <laughs> <laughs> like Too it. bad. Yeah. <laughs> you'll take it, you'll like it. <laughs> Alrighty. So, exiting the tomb? Yeah. Yes. yes. Alright. Let me get all so... my feather falls ready. <laughs> so now we have to go up the little thing that we came down. <laughs> oh. Well, no. here's here's what I'll ask you guys is yeah. as you are and not at the the absolute summit of Kelvin's cairn. Mm-hmm. And I will say Given your shenanigans getting into the tomb, you know, getting out onto that near summit place where you had found Asterix's body and the body of Blue Boots, very uneventful. It is not the the struggle coming out that it was before, but you do have a few options as to where you might go next. You can choose to be the first people that you know to reach the summit of Kelvin's Cairn, the true summit rising high <laughs> above you, or descend down and, you know, proceed into the Dwarven Valley or to Kaer Koenig to follow rumors of Jarlaxle or anywhere else you want to go. It is your oyster. Uh, see, I was all down for just going to the dwarves, but mm-hmm. as soon as you said be the first people to get to the top, I'm like, hmm, but. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let's let's do that and take a side step out of <laughs> in or into our characters yeah. and say, no. does anybody have a thing in their character that would say, I really got to get to the top of that mountain? Because Brian is absolutely no. not like no. he's just like he's just like I don't give a shit. No, about I'm not mountain. saying Krellick would do it at all. He's he wants to go. I want to do like the the Homer Simpson thing where I just stake my flag at this point, but then the whole top like breaks off and falls, so that I'm technically at the summit. <laughs> Dreamer is going to stare longingly at the summit. Nah. <laughs> Be like, Dreamer, what are you doing? Looking at the summit. Mm, yes, very nice summit. And like, Rian looks up at it, and it looks at him, and it looks back up at it. I know I shouldn't ask this question, but why are you looking at the summit? I want to see what's up there. <laughs> I want to look out over the dale. Well, you... And see a sight... That no one else has seen. You have fun, Dreamer. Maybe when the sun's back, you could actually see more. That's a great point. She does have a very good point. You probably can't see much at all from up there. Yep, it's probably a waste of time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> has the aurora <laughs> sort of been on like a pattern? It's been on a on a predictable pattern. the The periods of the what you would know as the day have been when the aurora is across the sky. Okay. So that's, that's the light. You know, associated with whatever magic is maintaining the darkness of the night through Icewind Dale. I'm not against it. You just gotta sell you gotta sell Rian on it. <laughs> like, that's all. <laughs> I'm not against it. I'm cool with going up there. I just you just gotta sell Rian on it. That's how all. long do we have until the Aurora? Or is it in full swing right now since we just You've woke been up? inside for about 18 hours, 20 hours, so roll me a survival check. Because right now, it is it is black out here. 17. 17, okay. Nice. So it takes you a little bit to 
orient yourself, given that you've been, you know, inside, away from the night sky for several hours now, and had a very, very stressful encounter while down there, uh, you probably have two, maybe three hours before the aurora appears in the sky, you know, if you're judging that properly. If we can get up there in the next couple of hours, the aurora will be out. <sighs> well, Mary, want to see the top of the world? Yeah. Oh. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we could do... Th- there's really high mountains on the other side, but that's where that cat was. <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> we'll go back when you're a little older, and we'll, we'll eat that cat. Uh, then they get or something yeah, else ate that cat. It's yeah, very it's dead already, yes. Bet there's more it cats probably had children that you can eat later. I'm not like oh, that. Not yet. I'm just saying you have to eat. It's not bad. You be big, you have to eat big things. I'm sorry. You can't f- survive on Krellick's rations forever. Okay, Dreamer. I'm with you at least. Let's... Uh, he just kind of looks up at it and stares at it. He's like, oh, god damn it. Okay. You would, you would, have, you would have to go as alone. You. I, I know. <laughs> yeah. It's not going alone. I'm coming. All right, let's go. I'm going on record I, now that this is a bad idea. Oh, hi. I, honestly, I am 100% in agreement with you, but I mean, at this point, we're here. It's right there. And he's like, he's like, he's literally just kind of motioning up to it, like, ho- like holding his hand up, like, it's right there. It's like, you know, silhouetted against the, the, the sky. Like, well, the dark sky. I'm just sky. saying, nature's <laughs> everywhere. If you want to talk to it, why don't you just pick up a pine cone, dreamer? We're on a mountain. <sighs> Whatever. A rock. I... The sooner we get to the top, the sooner we can get down and go have drinks with the dwarves or something. Pine, pine Grin, trees can be on mountains, that's all I'm saying. Can you paint with all the colors of the wind, Grin? He he just narrows his eyes at you. <laughs> Krellick has the overwhelming urge to push Rian into the snow. <laughs> <laughs> Just push him down the mountain. Yes. Let's get this. Have you I ever mean... heard the wolf cry to the blue corn moon? Let's get this do over. You, do you yes, do it? Let's get no. this over with. <laughs> okay. God. Fuck it. Up we go. That's that margin. Okay. Okay. And, yep, we'll, we'll start fucking <laughs> up. So... the summit of the mountain because Dreamer wants to paint. Yeah, with he all wants the to watch the, the pretty oh, Aurora. <laughs> Damn it. It'll right. be a life-changing experience. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, could you imagine? Like, what if you were like on Everest and saw an aurora borealis from the summit? It of depends. Everest? It would like change did I your or life. did I not just almost get killed by a frost giant witch? Um, <laughs> there, there might be some. Because if I did, a lot of people it, die on Everest. I, if, if, if I That's did, true. I think I'd want to go home more than I'd want to go. To- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, it may have been Frost Ray that killed all those people, and not just you know starvation slash yes. dehydration slash freezing exactly. cold exposure. Yeah, there might be liches up there. That's why so all many right. people die on Everest. Well, we're, we're <laughs> effing going anyway, so yeah. Yeah, so I'll yeah, just call me Blue Boots too. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, you guys. You are... You're too much sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so is the dragon okay, at the well top then, of this let's mountain. let's get a... Uh, let's see. Let's get ourselves a, uh, a survival check to climb... To navigate up this mountain in the dark. And because it is dark, let's get that at disadvantage unless two of you happen to uh, be working together on this who are proficient in it. Whoever is at the front, Tavini is going to hand forward her her lantern. Oh, nice! Uh, uh, the magic lantern. This is true. Dreamers Who is at the front. Ex- this is Dreamer's excursion. Yeah, yeah. Dreamer's taking point. Yeah, I would say Dreamer is a hundred percent leader. <laughs> Which makes sense to hand him the lantern because I think you two are the only two that can't see in the dark. Well, uh, tie this to uh, t- t- to your um, c- coat. Ah. Uh. Or your forehead, either one works. I hope my Featherfall team's ready. Hey, I got an extra spell slot. There's nowhere to tie it to on my head. It was a joke, just... just... <laughs> <laughs> Mush, Dreamer. Mush. 18 at disadvantage. Oh, that's bad oh ass. Good job, bud. 14 and a 20. That is bad to the bone. 
A natty twenty was your other was your was your your second roll. Cold as ice, dreamer. Is it cold as ice? All right. So as you are looking for a way up, it takes you a good 20, 30 minutes to find that there is indeed a, a path that goes up toward the summit. That is partially buried under the thick snowfall. You are able to sort of start guiding the rest of the party up this uh, this slope. In which case, let me see if I can uh, get something going for you guys. <laughs> now, as you are climbing, remind me everyone's perception. Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, passive? <laughs> Passive. Um, passive perception for 13. good old Rian. Is that the uh, twelve for Rian. thing in the parentheses? Yeah, it's ten plus your 12. modifier. Ten. Twenty-one. <laughs> yeah. Jiminy. Wow. Jiminy. <laughs> wow. Are you are you an expert in? Pers- how, I picked up how observant. Oh, oh, that's right. right. That's right. You took the observant feet. That's awesome. Did Do Wielder come with a fucking stat up And during those yeah. during those Probably rests, so. he's gonna be like, you know, hippity hoppity, get off my property. <laughs> Honestly, like, I mean, he's just he's just the one doing it now. We're all sleeping from here on out. You need to be a frog, wild shaped into a frog. When you say that, though, you can't say it if you're not a frog. It's true. Oh, all right, we said Dreamer is in the front. Who is following behind Dreamer? I mean. Probably Tavini. Oh, she's yeah. just saying it in the line. Right. The reason I say so that yeah. Tavini doesn't have any yeah. dark vision, so she's like exactly. So she's gonna need behind. his light. Yeah. Plus, you guys are, I think, the only two people that have survival. Like, period. Uh, she's not super great at it, but I still think you're the best. Yeah. Next best. Well, mine's, it's carried by mine wisdom, is right, so that's the yeah. Mine's ten straight up zero, no you, modifier. Who is uh, who's trailing in the back there? <laughs> I mean, what do you think? Like Acrylica position to me. Uh, <laughs> all right, Alex in the Acrylic's the old crotchety pucker in the back. Exactly, <laughs> it's, a, it's the little legs. It's, it's not a your fault. It's a sandwich. He's in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Climbing up more of this fucking mountain because. Dreamer wants to see the top. We're in agreement oh. for once, Krellick. Aye, <laughs> but it'll be alright. Just imagine how beautiful it'll be when we get to the top. Oh, I just... I don't I tell care. you what, if, <laughs> if it's a shit of you, I'm throwing him off the mountain, I swear to God. <laughs> Deal. I, I, turn, I, turn, I, I turn Dreamer into Flyer. Yeah. I heard... <laughs> <laughs> Back of the line packed right now. We're in an, we're in an He'll alliance. I heard that. I'll give you a stab. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Tavini, at the front of the line, completely oblivious, is like, Do you think we will be high enough to, to uh, touch the Aurora? Probably not. I hope so. We will see. Just high enough for gods to strike us down. All right. So as you are... Climbing higher. Dreamer, you are the (laughs) first to notice being in the front there at the very edges of Tavini's light there. To your right, there is an off-colored patch of snow. Oof. And staring at it a little closer, the shape there in the snow is familiar to you. It is a long body with a wedge-shaped head and two broad wings on either side. Ah, oh, fuck. Presumably sleeping soundfully <gasps> on the rocks there. Much larger than Miri. You can see the shape of a white dragon. Presumably <sighs> perched there, not yet having noticed the party, but Tavini's light is sort of falling across it, and as you watch, it stirs and draws the, uh, 
<laughs> the eyes of the others. <laughs> what are y'all doing? I, 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 I put my hand up to everyone. Dreamer, what did you do? <laughs> is, is it awake looking at us right now? No, it's sleeping. It, it, it's not. It's currently sort of up on a rock ledge, about 15 feet above this sort of widening as you near the very peak of the summit. You can actually kind of see it further above you and, you know, see some shapes that look like rocks uh, silhouetted against the, the night sky and the stars above, you know, that very top of the peak. And as you are looking, this creature kind of shifts in its sleep. Oh, she acrylic shield then. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you see one of those wings extend and stretch. It doesn't open its eyes yet, and you can see now uh, beneath it on this rock ledge is a goat eviscerated its entrails strewn across the snow. Oh god. You know, much of it missing, but still identifiable at the edges of Tavini's lamplight. I thought the goat was, like, alive, and it was gonna bleat and wake the dragon up. Oh yeah, like, god. <laughs> I've been so upset. I'm just like, shh, shh, please, shh, please, for <laughs> once, just shut up. Don't, don't, please, god, no, ah. please, god, no. <laughs> <laughs> the peak, the peak is within sight. Uh, Doom no, is within it's sight. It's not fucking worth it. <laughs> no, God, no, not to look. Such a great idea this was, wasn't it? Shh, shut up. No, okay. Hey, what the... We can all see it, right? but we need, to, we need to get back down this fucking oh, way. Well, Everybody. What about, what about that little, t- the little head in Grin's bag? They hated each other. It's not a good idea. Yeah, but... She talked about how her children were assholes and that she fucking she hated, hated them. one of them. She said she hated them. <laughs> well, maybe you could let her out and when the dragon's eating her, we could run. She's a skull what? That She's made a metal crown. What are you talking about? I I, I don't know. That's not a terrible I, I don't know. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile Krellick is I don't backing know. away. Yeah, I would say <laughs> Rian is like having slowly this, this taking conversation. a step right <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I start waving everyone back. Yeah. Everyone, give me a stealth check. Fuck. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, she's trying to murder oh, us. No. <laughs> Thank God I took breastplate instead of fucking scale more. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. Didn't help. Uh, I rolled a five. There it is. Fucking clanker. <laughs> Traver got a 22. I see, I see Krellick's got his strong suits. And technically, <laughs> yours doesn't your rolls with disadvantage, Yeah, Krellick? same as Tavini. <laughs> uh, I see a 22, a 5, a 15, <laughs> a 10, a 7. I stepped on a twig. Uh, what about our uh, our little girl, Miri? Oh, okay. I can do that. Oh, Miri. Still, oh, she has advantage in this. No, she doesn't. I'm sorry. She has a. Uh, it's a proficiency though. Hey, not bad. Okay. Fifteen for Mary. So, oh. against all odds, <gasps> as you start to like Phil creep Collins? your way back down the mountain, Felgren. Yes. Very briefly. Your boot slips on a patch of ice under the snow, and you start to slide down, you know, some rocks, uh, dropping about two feet, and you scrape your forearm on the rock face before one of the others in the party catches you and prevents you from, like, just tumbling down. He's got, he's got eyes wide. It hurts, but aside from that, you guys managed to creep back down to where you were before without seemingly drawing the attention of the sleeping dragons. Quick thing. <laughs> yes. I wave everyone back, but I keep going. What? <laughs> no. Are you just, you just want a new character? <laughs> no. Okay. I turn into a spider and I keep going. You turn into a spider and you start going through the snow. Yes. Oh, okay. that means Tavini's light goes poof, gone. She I, can't see. I, I thought you. We said you had it. No, you had that it. you were carrying. No, it. she gave it to you. Oh, then no, I would give it back. Okay, and then turn and into a spider. Then turn into a spider and disappear. 
I would give it back oh before God. doing this super crazy thing. So, <laughs> you guys descend, you know, uh, about a hundred or feet or so below where you had spotted the dragon. Before, kind of, there's a quick head count. Where the fuck is Dreamer? <laughs> None hells. What? That's, that idiot did not go back fucking up there, he's did just, he? He's just got his head cocked back, his eyes closed. <laughs> oh my god. I will say, it is difficult terrain in snow, and you're a spider. Yeah. You're probably looking at about 20 minutes to reach the, the very summit. Even though it's technically not that far, you could probably, as a person, walk there within like a less than a minute. But your smaller shape kind of makes it a little more difficult. I hope the view is beautiful with your shitty compound <laughs> eyes. <laughs> <laughs> a minute stretches by and another minute and Dreamer does not reappear. What about the rest of you? I, I what, is can't. The, what is the conversation happening here Fuck. knowing that there is a a dragon older than Miri, you know, uh, probably a good 10 to 12 feet long, just slumbering up there. I've got a question. Whatever yeah. the dreamer is, does he have a soul when he dies? Or, or we don't have to worry <laughs> about that. Whatever helps you sleep better at <laughs> night. That's the answer. <laughs> well, here's, here's the deal. When dreamer inevitably dies. Um, oh, I, yes. yeah. His soul will go into peril, and then she won't be a victim. Hey, don't include me in this. I was saying that out of character. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I didn't roll for Paralu and uh, oh, your other friend here. Oh I'd... yeah. Well, oh no. Duders I would assume that they shit. succeed. I, I wouldn't even yeah. need to roll. I mean, if we had to guess, I if they fail, though, so just, no, they won't fail right, though. Don't worry about that. No, Come on. We, we know they would have passed. Yeah, plus six. Shazam. <sighs> okay. If I swear if this dude Natty runs, I am going to fucking throw him off the mountain. This is everybody if, gets that that threat now. If we had a successful <laughs> sneak away with us, mm -hmm. and then we add two more, and Paralu just got a success. Yay! Yeah, there we go. We're fine. Nice. Hey. Woo, we're fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Because even though this thing has pretty high passive perception, diminished from being asleep. Yay. It's a minus five. You guys were He's no dreamer. barely on the threshold. Uh, so, Dreamer. Yeah? As you creep closer to the summit, the view from atop the mountain is incredible. With the snowy plains of Icewind Dale spreading out around you. And almost as if heralding your arrival to the summit, an aurora starts to paint itself across the sky. But at this height... And with your passive perception, you can faintly make out a small white shape that almost seems to be preceding the aurora, gliding from east to west, you know, from those mountains out towards the ocean. And as that aurora appears, you know, the land is no longer in darkness, but under what we would consider dim light. And... Amidst all the rocks that sort of mark the peak as you creep closer to the edge, you see it is not just stone that you approach. There is a mound of thick firs kneeling there at the very peak of Kelvin's Cairn. And you watch as a figure extends an arm to draw a symbol in the snow around them. Presumably there's somebody beneath all these furs. They finish drawing a circle and then turn their head over their shoulder, almost as if detecting something. And you can see a dark face with brilliant red eyes sort of flicking over the snow and they very briefly pass over you. Seemingly confused before going back to their work of drawing symbols in the snow. What does this person look like, or is it just... Uh, I would say with how, how much further under, you are well-traveled enough to identify this person as a drow. 
Oh. Can spiders speak? What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> Bar frazzle. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, shit. God damn it. I don't have a package for him. <laughs> if it is him. Well, you can't talk to him as a spider. Yeah, it's okay, Dreamer. Just the fate of the party rests on your shoulders. Yep, that's fine. <laughs> What are you? What are you doing? Don't worry about them. What does Dreamer do? The information he knows, and the situation he is in. I am going to drop my wild shape. Okay. And I can't see, so I'm going to cast dark vision on myself. All right. Roll for the initiative. <laughs> the moment you drop your wild shape, you hear this uh, very stern yet lilting voice don't scuff the lines of the circle i'm not a mage i don't want anything to go wrong and then as you continue casting a spell you can see this entire body stiffen as if measuring up what you're doing and then you know as the dark vision settles and you're able to more clearly see this individual it was very plainly you know white-haired drow you uh see him kind of give you another look as he continues to proceed with his work in the snow. What the hell are you doing here? Well, I wanted to see the aurora from the top Kelvin's cairn. I could ask the same of you. His mouth kind of hangs open a moment. And he looks you up and down like as if wondering who could be mad enough to <laughs> climb Kelvin's cairn in the darkness for the view. Only dreamer. <laughs> uh, what I'm uh, my work is nothing to do with you I show you but I ask again you know, truly you are not just here for the view as madness I are, are you Jarlaxle or do you know of Jarlaxle and as you ask he, he again kind of cocks his head to one side and after a moment, stands and turns towards you, and you can see that under all these thick furs, he's a very splendidly dressed male drow who's wearing, like, a dozen furs just to keep warm. He's very much bulked himself up. And uh, you can see his expression grow a little warmer. Yes, I'm Jarlaxle. I, uh... didn't expect to meet a fan up here. Oh, I have no idea who you are. <laughs> <laughs> His smile drops a little. <laughs> Damn, dude. Uh, I travel with some companions, and uh, they have a package for you. A package? Uh, would you know who it's from? Uh, that is a very strange thing to be bringing up a mountain. Yeah, it is. There's a lot of, actually, there's a lot of questions that go with that. But I... Amen. Listen, I just work here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> do you say that no <laughs> why not <laughs> because that's so Damn not it. dreamer that's a fucking i'd say that's a hundred percent a fucking so green good. thing to say I know. We've, we've discussed it long enough that i would have an idea who it's from i think yeah um the uh oh let's see this particular package let's double check because we do have a uh our important document list of deliveries. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. It is a small burlap package with a rounded oblong shape within, addressed to Jarlaxle. Uh, there would be there would be no. Oh, well, actually, there would be a, we, a sender on there. This is from a person named Felrecht Lafine. Get wrecked. It's a small burlap package from someone named Felrecht. On hearing that name, the mixture of, of confusion and pleasure and then dampened pleasure that has kind of overcome him from, you know, being recognized but not admired, <laughs> <laughs> bright, brightens again. Felrecht. That's actually you know, kind of sweet for them to, uh, to send anything. You said you had come here to deliver it. Well, not here specifically. But yes, uh, 
there with the Luskar deliverers. Ah, well, and you say your friends are down the mountain? Down the mountain, uh, past a white dragon. Mm. That puts a damper on things. Yeah. And a white dragon on the slopes? Where? I'll point in the general direction. To it? <laughs> so it's like it, a minute walk. It would walk be about, right a, about 100 feet down the slope from you. <laughs> right over there. Uh, yeah. Beyond the edges of your dark vision, but as you point in that direction, uh, Jarlaxle's eyes kind of follow the line of your arm, and he squints into the darkness. I'm sorry, friend. I There's no dragon over there. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, shit. <laughs> fine but then we're just yelling down the mountain where the fuck is dreamer (laughs) you have now 60 feet of dark vision right yeah yeah it it is too far for you to be able to tell whether he is being truthful or not or has maybe just missed this dragon i was the only one who saw it out of everyone so ooh, it it was there just 20 minutes ago. Well, that's concerning. But, uh, it would just be good to send with you, but I have work still to complete up here. What is it that you're doing that you can't step away for two seconds? <laughs> <laughs> Roll me a persuasion check. <laughs> You're so fucking busy. Is anybody else's shoulders like super tense right now? Oh, only a nine. How are you gonna roll rocks until this moment? God. Yeah, no shit. The worst. (laughs) Just fucking dropping bombs and then giving him shit over the (laughs) dice gods. Hmm. I can't explain all of my business here in the tale. I can say that I've come for the sake of Luskin. I have the safety of the city to worry about as far as my enterprises go. And I have business here. The ghosts of the past that I've come to see and check in on. Now, if you bring your friends up the mountain and make this delivery that you've come so far for, maybe I could make use of you. Makes it sound so easy. (laughs) Again, there is a white dragon, and I was able to sneak past. I doubt we will be able to do it again. That's what Josie's banking on. Looking at him, he does not seem terribly concerned with the presence of a white dragon. So here's the strat. (laughs) If we fail the check, we book it to this guy and blow up his spot. Thoughts? Um, well, I mean, well, my whole thing is, is at this point, if Dreamer hadn't come back, Rian definitely would have yes, started creeping back up the mountain towards him. He wasn't just going to wait for him. Like, he wouldn't have just stopped and been like, well, let's see if he makes it back, because fuck him. <laughs> like, no, I imagine like, there would be there would be an argument with, with Felgrin, and yeah. then eventually he would cave, and they would go yeah. look for fucking <laughs> exactly. Dreamer. At least get up to where the dragon yes. was so that we could, like, get eyes on it. So, like, you know, to hold that position down well, just to make sure case, it's not eating you know. him. Exactly. Exactly. So, I would imagine we are all making our way back up the mountain. At least creepily towards where the dragon was anyways at this point. Okay. Yeah. Roll me a stealth check. Yeah, well, actually, no. yeah, you know what? Go ahead. Generalized stealth check. Not bad. Starting and it off. And are, uh, are any of you... Looking out for the dragon. Oh, oh everybody yeah. got a match at this point. <laughs> okay, active perception checks. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, that was... Oh, I guess Miri needed it anyways, too. So, one second. Noise. 20. Now perception. 15 for me. And... An 18 for Miri. We fucking rocked it, me and Miri. My little God, girl so bad. Ass. <laughs> Ooh, I'm a seeker. Don't worry, guys. Seeker and grin. Everybody, just hop on my back. I will carry you. Well, at least All the right. perception wasn't complete dog do. Yeah. Let it be known that as you creep your way up this mountain, you see no signs of the dragon. 
Furthermore, those of you who can see in the dark and at the edges uh, of your vision, you know, even just creeping past that place where it was, can see that though there is blood on the snow and a few remaining bits of entrail, the remaining carcass of that goat is gone. And there are scrape marks on the stonework and in the snow. Very clear signs of this dragon having moved about and seemingly disappeared. Hopefully it was uh, taking a nap. It just took the goat home. The dead, the really Hopefully dead. This, yeah, this goat. can't be home. It's got to have a trove somewhere. So A, tr a horde? Horde, whatever. Come on. <laughs> Don't give me shit right now. I'm dense. <laughs> I'm stressed. <laughs> so yeah. what are you guys doing? We're gonna creep up further, I guess. Yeah. Try to find fucking Dreamer. Yes, like, I just have this horrible feeling that it's, like, invisible. I hear Krella coming right now. <laughs> ka-chunk, 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 ka-chunk. <laughs> so, yeah, you, uh... Creep the group of golf. Creeper! You managed to make your way up to the peak and see not only Dreamer there silhouetted against the newly formed Aurora in the dim light, but a very heavily furred individual uh, with eyes that reflect back red in the darkness towards you as his attention flicks from one face to another in the party. There's a very, very predatory eye shine from that uh that darkened well, face. There he is, Rian. Throw him off the mountain. I think he's kinda of keeping it quiet. He's like, Dreamer, what the <laughs> fuck? Who why the fuck? who the fuck is that? What what are we doing here? Why did you go back up the mountain? What are you doing, you crazy little fucking robot? <laughs> <laughs> there was a goddamn dragon back there. And it's not there now. That's even scarier. <laughs> this is Darlaxel. Oh my god. What? That you did not just find Dar Axel up on the top of this fucking mountain. He did. <laughs> this is the weirdest possible <sighs> reality. No, I'm, fucking, I'm gonna jump off the mountain myself. I'm just jumping off the mountain. It's done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, come on. We're going off the mountain. She's just gonna approach. <laughs> Has Tavini heard of Jar Axel outside of the group? Uh, since you have lived here in Icewind Dale. There are a couple of things that you would know about this individual. It's sort of folklore passed on. Stuff that happened decades ago. You're aware of an artifact called the Crystal Shard that decades before your birth, presumably Jarlaxel and another famous drow from the region, Drist Doerden, the two of them had fought over possession of this shard. Ooh. And uh, as you are all kind of, you know, approaching and he's taking you all in, I believe you have a package for me. I, uh, uh, Grin, Grin, don't you, don't what? you have his? And he's still just whispering. He's like, the, the, the package, I'm pretty sure you have the, the one for Do John I, Axel, don't you? Am I the one that has it? I he kind of pats so. it, so. the one in the knife, right? Oh! <laughs> he kind of reaches into his, uh, his breast pocket. I think, I think this is it. And he hands it over. And as he accepts it, he passes you, hands you, counts out hastily about 20 gold, and then starts ripping off the twine and then the, the paper around this package. And in the dark, you see a stone resting in his hand. Dreamer, this stone would be of a familiar type to you. As I believe you have one in your possession. Oh. Oh, it's a luck stone? A uh, ascending stone. Oh, shit. Did I have it? Did someone else have it? If somebody else has it. it, then that. But it is a stone marked with, uh, engraved with a face on it. As if whispering to somebody. And he kind of hefts it in his hand. And... He has this very sly demeanor about him, very much like a like a Felgrin who's grown into his uh, wily ways, a little more mature, but still a bit of a trickster. 
But there is a bit of tenderness in that smile. Seems like a good dude. <laughs> Alric. Uh, I can't thank you enough for bringing this up here. Hmm. Sentimental value? Connection with a friend. Good way to stay in touch. But, I believe... And he looks at Dreamer. Do you think I might get your help with something? All of your help, I should say. I mean, kind of seems to be what we do, so... Uh, Rian is still, like, whispering. Like... <laughs> 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 I guess that's what we're going to do. Does it pay? It'll pay in information. And better understanding of some of the evil that's happening in this land. Fair enough. Well. And uh, he kind of looks over the rest of the party as if getting their permission as well, their acceptance into this uh, favor. Yeah, I think he starts nodding and kind of like does that like hand thing. Like, come on, come on, let's go, let's go. There's a dragon somewhere around here. <laughs> <laughs> so he crouches and again starts tracing into the snow and explaining as he does I spoke to a soothsayer in Kaer Dineval who gave me a magic sigil that should help me with a vision of what could come to pass in these lands I am no magic user so I don't want anything to go wrong but it should yet still work and the more people there are to witness what could come to pass here in the Dale, more people might be inclined to stop it. And uh, as he's doing this, Artis and Perilou have kind of stepped off to one side, and as much as she had stayed away from him overnight on the opposite side of the campfire, they've been having a quiet conversation in the back amongst themselves, seemingly more engaged with, you know, some discussion there than in what the Leskar deliverers are doing. What are they saying? <laughs> you ready to die yet? No. Okay. I can read, <laughs> I can read lips now. Oh, okay. Yeah, but are you looking at them? Yeah. Yeah, that is good. Uh, okay. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Very briefly. <laughs> that's a good point. You are talking yeah, to Charles. That's Axel. my question. Like... <laughs> I, I'm in. He's looking around, looking at everyone else. Fair enough. All right. In the dim light from the aurora above in your own new dark vision, you can make out faintly that the pair seem to be discussing her affliction and how best to proceed from the party or solving what has occurred to her. Okay. It is not enough information for you to really work with it too much. But anyway, as Jarlaxle continues, da -da -da, I have something here for you. He continues drawing sigils in the snow, and you can see that much of the circle that he has drawn is nearly complete. He has just a few more symbols that he needs to, uh, to sketch down. And as he finishes the last of them, the entire circle explodes in a shower of snow. The shower of snow transforms into a raging blizzard that surrounds you. Everything within a 60 foot radius here is suddenly difficult to see through. It's about 60 feet of snow flurry that has overcome you. Everything beyond that radius completely concealed by an impenetrable wall of sleet. So we're going to uh, to mark off a 60 foot circle here for you guys. Oh jeez. Fuck <laughs> it. 60 foot. I think Rian reaches down and picks up Miri to like hold her close just in case <laughs> like he's freaked out. Like You still have like PTSD from the avalanche? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. As soon as the snow starts coming, he freaks. He like grabs her real quick, like holds her close, like kind of looking around at all yeah. the snow. So this here is your new boundary on the battlefield. Uh, uh, We're going uh, to... Let's rewind that real fast. Uh, uh, battlefield. I don't know if you saw my declaration oh, yes. of, a gonna, of assing we're butts. We're going to get there in a moment. I did see assing but, butts. <laughs> yeah, we are all dead. Yeah.